Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast. Happy New Year to everybody hanging out. I uh, hope this year brings you uh, joy, peace, prosperity, and uh, everything that you hope for, everything that you're trying to build, your, your visions, your dreams. This is the year for us to go after them. Um, 2017 was awesome. Had a, a lot of uh, amazing strides. Uh, doing this full-time now, that was something that was new. Just turned 33, so... Uh, went full time at 33. Uh, I had a vision of a safety net, like well, on Patreon. Once I hit a certain number, which I'm way far away from that number, but I, I thought that when I hit this number, it could uh, take place of the paycheck that I was getting working my full time job driving a truck. And I said, okay, once I, if I stay committed and keep at it, I'll eventually get to this number where I'll be able to, you know, be able to make money off of doing what I love to do. And but uh, on on the way to that number, um, I got let go from my job after 10 years of being a truck driver. I got let go. And um, we just felt the peace about it to just start pursuing what I was have been building for years, to doing this music thing, uh, podcasting. I do graphic art and stuff on the side. So I'm able to make a little bit of money from a few different uh, streams of income. So tried to go full time with it. And ever since I've been staying consistent with what I'm good at uh, doing the podcast of doing teachings, uh, sharing information online, doing music. And it's cool to be able to finally, after doing this for years, to finally be able to, to wake up and my job for the day uh, to go to work is to write a song. You know what I'm saying? So I want to thank you guys uh, for 2017. I want to thank you guys for 2018, 19, 20. As we move forward, man, you guys are behind me. Um, this stuff is spreading like wildfire. Welcome all the new listeners. The podcast numbers are jumping. It's it's amazing. I'm blown away. All the messages that I get daily, people who are coming on board, people who are or who are joining the um, the um, Patreon community, putting their hard earned money behind what I'm trying to build here and supporting the podcast. Because you guys know that the podcast is free to consume, but it's not free to produce. And uh, you guys coming on board with the vision. I'm going to continue saying it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, guys. I'm going to give a shout out to some of the people who are supporting now, some of the people who just came on in the month of December, the last couple of days. It's been about two weeks since we did a show. But I'm going to give a quick shout out to uh, Brett Stacy. What's up, brother? Thank you for coming on supporting. Uh, Taylor B. What's up, Taylor? Taylor, man, thank you because you've been supporting for some years now. I remember uh, when I first came out with Awaken the Fire under... Um, LCOB, running with the Lost Children of Babylon. 
you were there from those days, 2012. It's 2018. You're, you're still here. Thank you for being a day one. Uh, and, and there's many of you guys, man. Um, let me go down the list here. Matt Ladding, what's up, brethren? Yvonne, Anthony Menza, um, Travis Sabin, Sabian, he always gets me saying his name wrong. Alexander Gleesman, Linda Merciado, Russ Mendler, Joshua Hogue, Brenda James, Jen Makita, Carl Rawson, David. More salaries. <laughs> Tarek BB. What's up, Tarek? Uh, Scott Beery, Brandon Lancaster, Dave Volkner, all of you guys who have come on in the month of December. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. I couldn't do this without you. Uh, many things planned for 2018. I've been working on a lot of new music, and we're just trying to get some finishing touches up on a couple songs. And as soon as these songs are done, they're uploaded to Patreon patreon.com backslash truth seeker so you guys who are supporting i just uploaded a new song yesterday it's called divine featuring myself in the voice go over there to check that out um all of these songs are going to be eventually on an album maybe in a couple months called seer that's what i'm working on so i got a couple more tracks in me that i'm going to put out and then wrap it up for an album i think 2015 was the last time i officially put out a, a release so thank you guys for supporting you get a bunch of perks rewards all that stuff over there at patreon.com backslash true seeker any level of giving anywhere from a dollar 25 10 5 whatever you could do man thank you guys from the bottom of my heart enough of that enough of the news um we're gonna get into the guests we got an awesome show playing for you guys today a friend of mine he's been following my work for some years now so uh, i appreciate that we're gonna be talking to witch boy aka jeshua morningstar what's up my brother yo yo what's up what's going on good morning man it's early for you you're still drinking your coffee right Oh, uh, no, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Welcome to the show, bro. Uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me. Um, we got a lot of stuff in common. You, Like I said, you've been supporting for a while. We've been friends on Facebook for a while. And uh, we've been talking about eventually doing some stuff together because uh, you're a hip-hop artist and uh, you're into a lot of esoteric themes, a lot of fantasy role-playing stuff uh anime <laughs> stuff like that i love all that all that stuff mixing it in, in the music man T tell the people a little bit about yourself about your music and what you do all right um yeah my name is witch boy i'm from Asheville, north carolina uh as uh truth seeker said i'm a hip-hop artist and i draw a lot of inspiration from like the esoteric and magic but at the same time when i look at it it's a lot of it too comes from like magic in the sense of like you know Dungeons and Dragons, Final Fantasy. It's just looking at it like that because in those in those like video game cultures, in the anime, like it's all like normalized. Like I look at it like you know like like science fiction has always been the forerunner for you know like technology. Like when you read Jules Verne, you know Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, he talked about the Nautilus before there were submarines. So in a lot of ways, I look at like. You know, you look at like fantasy, like, you know, urban fantasy, sci-fi, whatever, and you just see people that have all of these abilities and it's like normalized though. And it's, you know, pretty much like your birthright as an existing being to be able to like express yourself in these different ways. And, you know, that just like really resonates with me. I remember getting into like uh, having this uh, overwhelming uh, fascination with the occult and witchcraft as a kid i think a lot of it came from the movies right and then and then seeing people with these special abilities you know and i, I remember um in high school getting a book that taught you to uh to uh do pyrokinesis to be able to shoot fire out of your hands right and i think you know what i'm saying maybe there was some of that stuff there from like watching the x-men and seeing that and like resonating with it and hoping for it to be real but maybe on some level that it is real and we don't know it we're told that it's fantasy we're told we're told that it's make-believe but there's occult sciences people throughout history with abilities able to do stuff like like we see uh, control the weather heal themselves all of this stuff that is mixed into these comics and then the movies the fantasy there's so much stuff in there and it's deep esoteric occult stuff we look at like the game um what is it um warcraft 
about the the the, the, uh, the druids and the talismans and the ruins and the special abilities and the powers. Like, there's some really deep information in some of these video games, man. Yeah. Um, a personal favorite of mine, um, a little bit different, but there's a book series, and it's also a TV series. It's called The Magicians. It's by Lev Grossman. There's a trilogy. There's The Magicians, The Magician King, The Magician Land. Um, they're my favorite book series, hand down, but there's a sci-fi television series called The Magicians that's about to start its third season on the 10th, which is really cool. Uh, it's based on the book series. But when you uh, when you read the books, it also goes into some pretty deep stuff. Like it talks about pretty like deep magical theory. It talks about you know like equivalent exchange. It kind of gets into like a little bit of alchemy, and it talks about you know like you know how you cast your spells, but then you know you've got certain elements on you, or you have certain hands to hand signals that go with it and like hand gestures and in the move in the show what they do actually is they make them all like cuts they base it all off of like finger cutting so if you're casting a spell you might be something like you know yep. some like you know some I'm kind of thing yeah. and like i don't know it's just it's very like that it's very it's interesting stuff yeah like um we i know we we, we got into um avatar the last airbender and all of the stuff that's in there from like uh, Eastern mysticism and uh, yoga and alchemy and uh, the chakra system. Like, there's a clip from from that show that went viral, showing you what chakras are and and how they're 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 blocked and opened and things like that. That's a yeah. viral clip from a, th that yep. cartoon, man. There's tons of stuff that's that, that's been there, but it's almost this, this weird thing because it's like, oh, you have seen that in a movie? Oh, you have seen that in a, a cartoon? It's like, no, this is. This is ancient knowledge. This isn't something that a writer made up in a movie. Like they're going in there and taking the, the esoteric knowledge and kind of making it plain, almost like what we do with the music as well, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's like yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, I like I like the ability to do that, and like I like how like the, the messages can get out because it's like things can be viral, right? Like you can hear a song, right, like about like trapping, and then you know you feel like a drug lord, and like I don't know, maybe you're on your way to your job, you're like, right, man inkos or something but you're like selling drugs <laughs> like one savage so at the same time the same song could go viral and it could be you talking about you know metatron's cube or like the Mercata or something or like you know me talking about like you know using your aura to like heal yourself you know what i mean it could yep. be it's just that little snippet so i mean you you instantly have like whatever the person's into like they just that information's like fed to them you know they we get like a taste of like the interest yep it's cool it's cool because i mean that's that, that's the whole persona of it like the, the the spirit behind the music and 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 the message that you're trying to convey um it's pretty cool because like when, whenever we're, we're talking about the music and people feeling like a drug lord or f feeling like they're a gangster or, or a thug or whatever and then listening to, to to some of the stuff that we put out people are having like spiritual encounters and they and they feel more lighter they feel more refreshed they, they have this overwhelming uh fascination to explore the stuff we're talking about they feel more connected on a spiritual level so music is very powerful in, in, in painting this picture and almost creating your reality it's it's used as a as, as, as just like a soundtrack man i can't even explain like the different messages that I get from people and the on, on, only way I can look at it is like there's been other people's music that's done that for me you know what I'm saying there it has been the Lost Children of Babylon albums and the Trevor Halls and the conspirituality that I listened to and their music took me to a new plane of existence with terms and ideas hidden within it and then my music is still doing that for other people it's insane to, to, even, to even fathom what's going on yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I mean, your your music was probably like some of the first that I encountered that was so like blatant with it. You know what I mean? Like before, I I ran across what uh, you know your music. I'd listen to you know Zion I, um, you know Dead Prez. You know, like you know, definitely some like conscious hip hop, most death, not like all that. Like I listened to like what you might consider to be like conscious hip hop, and I like honestly like before that, like there are a few songs like I, my other project I do, which is called The Last Word Benders. Um, really awesome stuff where we are even more so kind of plugged into the like 
kind of nerdy anime k-pop whatever kind of like subculture um but you know some of the songs with that you know i'll talk about things like like i'll mention like chakras or i'll mention like a merkaba or something but other than that i've never heard anyone else like blatantly be like you know the kundalini sick fire travel you know pathway <laughs> never quite heard anyone quite say that i'm just like damn you know and like it was good and actually it was a very important time that i ran across your music because like honestly it's, um, yeah, I, I don't even remember how I found you. I think I was just looking up something on, like, Elohim or something. And then I think I found your, your song, The Inner Reach of Outer Space. Yeah. And then I, what is this? And then I kind of went down a bit of a rabbit hole. And, yeah, I just remember just sometimes listening to it and just being like, yeah, this, it's basically like the information that I've been looking for, you know, listening to, like, Esther Hicks and, like, listening to, like, you know, uh, Bashar and, like, reading... <laughs> The secret of flower of life and all that stuff but it's like in a song which is the best way that i learned it's like literally know, right? the information there it's some like southern chopper style spitting over like, <laughs> like i understand this which makes me think if anybody did i don't know like someone did like a quantum physics rap or someone did like a even like i don't know like history rap or something just throw some like southern chopper shit on it and like it's like oh well, i know all about the civil war now you know what i mean like that's the weird thing that I kind of, you know what I'm saying, brought to the table with dealing with like LCLB and the Lost Children of Babylon. It's all their stuff is like East Coast stuff and uh, it sounds like uh, Wu-Tang. And so here I come from the South, you know, ha having, having the slang or the draw that I have. Um, and then I'm talking about esoteric mysticism in the Bible Belt, right? Over... I wouldn't say trap beats or crunk beats. I, I've tried to stray, you know what I'm saying, from that stuff. But um, it's bringing something totally different to the table. And uh, there was, I don't think there was anybody doing it at the time. Now, there was, like, some of the Beast Coast stuff, but that's that's still from New York, you know. But um, as far as coming, doing it down here, there was so much, like, uh, backlash. Because I came from Christianity doing gospel rap, you know what I'm saying? And then I flipped it. <laughs> We're talking about mysticism and chakras and traveling to outer space and out-of-body experiences and stuff, man. It's crazy. But as far as you, man, having, um, I mean, you're living in Asheville. I mean, that's kind of like, like I guess, the go-to spot for the hippies and the, the festivals and stuff, man. Like, what, what kind, what kind of, what kind of uh, response are you getting from your music there? Um, to be honest with you, um, Asheville's a little bit weird. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, you're absolutely right. It's kind of like this hippie oasis. Like, everyone here is, like, a model or an actor or, like, a witch or something. You know, they consider they're like a, they're like a poly vegan. I don't know. Like, everyone's got some kind of, like, special snowflake to them going. <laughs> and that's just, yeah. <laughs> and that, that's just the thing about it though right it's like it's kind of like um you ever re re you ever read a book called the wizard of earth sea by ursula k Le Guin? Mm -mm. so it's a cool like it's like a children's book series the main character sparrowhawk basically goes on to become one of the greatest magicians on the on the earth or on the planet but earth sea which is like the collective of island islands he's from this island called not like g-n-o-t where everyone there is a wizard so it's literally like on not he's kind of a standout wizard and people think he's cool but when he goes like everywhere else he's like this great like sparrow hawk the sage and he's like the most powerful wizard like everyone knows but back on not it's like oh yeah my neighbor he can like control the weather and oh yeah my other you know so with Asheville. It, there's so many music there's so much music going on at all times it's such a tourist centric place that it's like there's constantly like i don't know you could you could probably throw a rock and like hit a musician or hit an artist or whatever so when you're in Asheville and you're like hey i'm a rapper yeah, or i'm like, hey me too <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh me too or it's like okay cool you kind of have to set yourself like apart from yeah. uh you know the the rabble so to speak because yeah people will instantly either be like yeah that's cool or so um you know I, we've been doing with, with lost word benders um we've been doing uh like rap here since like 2013 and you know it's it's been like we've definitely built up a name to where it's like if people um people like, people ask about oh what, what are some good like actual rap groups or what are some who are some people i should hit up if i want to play a show or when um, you're on mushrooms who can i listen to when i'm on mushrooms what, what music? Yeah. and they're like yeah, yeah listen our, to, listen to witch boy yeah yeah <laughs> our, our name comes up often now the witch boy thing is actually a relatively new development okay. you know what I mean? I mean i've literally i've been writing music since i was like 16 um this past year 
I've really been inspired to like make this project. You know what I mean? And I didn't necessarily make the project with like an actual agenda in mind, but I can see how it fits into that kind of agenda very well. And it was literally kind of inspired to, you know, not only the name came to me, but then also just like the whole process of making the album. It was just like, okay, make this album. And I'm like, I mean, okay, I guess I'll do that. So I've been doing that. I've been putting out little snippets. I've been putting out, uh, I've been putting out like, I basically just been stoking the fire. I'm about to release my first Witch Boy project, like full in Witch Boy project. It'll be available on all the like local outlet, not local to all the stores like Spotify, iTunes, Tidal, Bandcamp, all that on the 11th of January. So it's my album's called 111, and I'm dropping it on 111. So it's like, so yeah, I'm like I've just literally been just sprinkling all this hype for like maybe the last three or four months. And it's all going to, like, culminate and, like, build on the 11th. And so I'm really interested to see what happens after that. That's what's up, man. I definitely support it. And, uh, yeah, just send me a link. I'll promote it, too. I, I remember I, I bought your last effort you put out. And uh, I purchased that. It was good stuff. Um, that's funny you, you say that about just, like, everywhere you go, there's there's a rapper or everybody's an artist or a fire dancer or belly dancer. Yeah. Everybody is something eclectic or whatever, you know? So it's funny too. You say that about that book, about the, the person uh, in, in the town where everyone's a wizard. And, and so they're just like, just like a normal person. But then when they travel and go abroad, they're like the greatest magician. And let's learn from this guy. There's a scripture in the Bible, man, where Jesus kind of talks about that. He talks about like, uh, that a prophet is without honor in a, in his hometown because everybody knows him. Like, they kind of grew up with him. They came up with him. Like, what are you talking about? Truth seeker, Derek? I know that guy. He's he's not a prophet. He's not a he's not this. He's not that. But then when you travel, like, people, you're, like, venerated. People love you. They want to, they, you know what I'm saying? They want to hear from you. And uh, it talks about, when, it, when we're talking about magic, we're talking about, you know, Jesus, w about healing people and stuff like that, performing miracles as far as, the wizards and the witches, right? Uh, Jesus couldn't perform miracles in his hometown because they knew him. He had, he couldn't like, this is the son of God incarnate or whatever. He couldn't even heal people and perform miracles in his hometown. They're like, man, that's Jesus. Man, he's a carpenter, bro. I came up with this dude. I ate lunch with him last week. He's a regular dude. Why are you guys impressed with this guy? You know, but when you leave town, then there's a bunch of stuff about that. Even like you hear like little Boosie just came out and was like, you got to leave your hometown. Cause not only, are you kind of be kind of rendered powerless, but you, you, you put a target on your back. People get jealous. People want to kill you. You know what I'm saying? What's up, homie? And, uh, and so, that, I mean, that's, that's a big thing, man. If you, if you having this target on your back for being good or for standing out or you having what everybody else wants in your hometown, man. Yeah. Agreed, dude. Yeah. I mean, I can totally, I can relate to that. By the way, this is the homie K-pop Kakashi. Other, Shalom, other brother. Last word, vendors. Yeah, this guy's got some good insight. I like what you're saying, man. Thank Be you, sir. Oh yeah, yeah, man. I mean, I totally, I actually, I feel that so hard because it's like so much of like, okay, we're talking about we're talking about like healing, like so much of that deter depends on like people's belief, right? Like, like with me, with my manifestation and my healing, part of my work right now is integrating my beliefs or integrating what I want on a level to where I believe it and I feel it with the same certainty as I feel and believe in like gravity. That's kind of one of my, my current like pursuits that I'm pursuing. So I think that, you know, we kind of need that across the board for, you know, for like a lot, a lot of things. And it's hard when you don't like fully believe. So going back to, okay, I'm in my hometown <laughs> and I'm a prophet and I'm like, I'm going to heal you. And it's exactly what you said. It's like, what, what, Yeshua, what, he makes coffee and shit, but he's not, he's <laughs> not heal my chakra. Like what, get the fuck out of here. With <laughs> but then, you know, New York or something. And I like meet some people at a party and then we're talking. And then I like basically say the same kind of stuff. I would probably say anywhere else, or I share my music the same way I would anywhere else. And then it's like, Oh my God, who are you? What? Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's good, man. It's, uh, there, there's a there's a lot lot to be said about that, and uh, I've I've definitely seen it coming up with like um, a bunch of rappers. Everybody's a rapper now. Uh, my daughter watches Logan Paul, and uh, on uh, YouTube, and he's a rapper. Like everybody, like all the Disney kids are rappers. 
Like they okay. all have rap songs and they're all viral, 15 million views on every video, and they can't rap. That's the thing. They're, they're not rappers, but they, they can write a rhyme and do it. I guess that does make them a rapper or somebody wrote, wrote it for them or whatever, but it's like it's oversaturated, especially like when I, when I left like the whole Christian hip-hop thing and got out of that, that was like nasty too because that was oversaturated with everybody's a rapper. And then when in the Christian community, it gives you this false sense of accomplishment or this false sense of being good at what you do because we would go to a lot of churches and your uncle comes to church and he he raps and they let him get up there and do a song and he sucks he's not good at all he's not called to do it he has no gifting no talent and the whole church stands up and applauds him man you did an awesome job and that gives us he comes off the stage and he's like hey might have a future in this you know what i'm saying it's scared to tell people the truth and there was like so many people doing that mixed with the people who are actually good who actually studied who actually put in the work and uh when it comes to the spiritual hip-hop it's kind of becoming like that too now you start seeing some of the forerunners getting mad um I i've seen when, when we're talking about lcob lost children of babylon richard raw aka to Hootie Most, one of the best MCs. He's so eclectic and, and different with his style, the way he approaches it. Um, but there are Christian rappers who emulate his his style, and it's totally original. There was four grades in a hallway with a witch named Madam Blavatsky from, from ascending from the twelfth planet. And he's like he changes his voice, and it's like it's totally unique. And then I find Christian rappers like who are like a spinoff of them copying Shit. their styles like oh it's so disgusting man oh, i don't man. like it and because i see people doing that to me now like people i mean i guess once you you reach a certain level of not fame but i guess of notoriety and, and a lot of people know who you are it, it comes naturally because you influence people they're listening to your music and then they start writing i mean even some of the dudes i rap with here who i help produce they're taking my bars and stuff Oh, uh, they're talking. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's this weird, muddy place, and it's hard for me because I'm totally about originality and starting something totally different. What I have is organic, and then to see other people copying it, and it's like usually when that happens, I run. I say, okay, y'all can have it. Let me go on to something else. I don't. I don't need to do that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because people start copying you, and maybe maybe people who are copying you get more notoriety than you and they're taking your stuff there's all of these these things when it comes to the to the table of and um the waters being muddied and there being so many people doing what, what you do you know that's real i mean wow that's yeah i never quite thought of it like that let me ask you this though when you what do you think constitutes as like biting a style because um i'll tell you a little bit about like kind of my journey through rap you know, like I told you, I've been writing since I've been maybe like 16, 17, you know, I probably wrote my first rap song in high school. Um, and like, just over time, my style has like changed and evolved. Like I've gotten better, I've gotten more intricate. I would say that the most organic, like not even really that inspired by me was some of the stuff I was writing maybe a few years ago. And it was very like, you know, I did a lot of like kind of fast flow stuff. I mean, I like Tech 9 so it yeah. wasn't like yeah. Tech 9 or anything but it was just i was inspired to like okay. kind of have darker subject matter and spit faster i would do that but what i have actually learned more from watching other rappers who i like both both people who i know in person and people who i just see on the internet and i'm like whoa that's cool is just i sort of more get impressions from people i don't necessarily go and okay whoa i like i like the underachievers so i'm gonna steal the underachievers flow it's more like whoa i their, like swag and their energy and they're being informative and they're talking about like higher consciousness but then they're also like really like catchy and i'm like whoa how do i capture that so i kind of then on like oh wait and so i found a way to like be a more well-rounded artist really from watching other people yeah. and even more like my friends around Asheville. So I've got a person who I collab with pretty regularly, Herb the Wizard. Um, I think if you I think if you picked up my Ninja Than Witches my Ninja Than Witches EP that we dropped earlier, like during the fall or something, it has a song called Devil's Lettuce on it. I don't know if that's the one you heard or yeah, if you I think it was. 
It's the Devil's Lettuce. That was kind of the, that was my first sort of like test on a witch boy track. But it's me and Herb the Wizard, and he's totally someone who I've known for years. And he's got a very like catchy, like just super like swagged out style across the board. And just in working with him, I've gotten to where I could like you know I, I can keep my like intricacy of my flows, and I can keep my like content and lyrics to them. But I've learned how to be more relatable, and I've learned how to be more like you know just more like listenable essentially you know i would say um the no-no is is when you consciously do it like as far as like biting a rapper like oh let me let me take that and kind of you know take his rhyming scheme and take that consciously do it that way or take a punchline and consciously okay true seeker said this let me say it you know or, or let me say this and when you consciously do it and like it was weird for me coming from the christian scene because because that's blatant. I mean, the Christian people copy, you know, in, in anybody in the mainstream who has success. And um, I, I remember Toby, pe- pe- people biting. Uh, what'd you say? I was like, Toby Mac. <laughs> Toby. Speaking of Toby Mac, you know who I'm sitting here thinking you look like? Um, Michael Tate, which is one of the other members of DC Talk. <laughs> such a for you about that. You want to hear it? It's yeah, pretty funny. Totally. I out in Christianity as well. So I was pretty active in a local, in like a United Methodist church, like when I was in like middle school and high school, I got into like youth group. And so through that, I was exposed to like, you know, grits, <laughs> all. grits yeah. <laughs> a bunch of like, I honestly went to Ixus Festival. I've gone to, like, I've seen like a lot of Christian music. One time Michael Tate came to Covenant Community United Methodist Church at, for like a concert yeah. and I was for it. People, I swear to God. So, also another thing about it, it was a predominantly white church. They kid, thought you so. were here. <laughs> yeah, I was walking in there. Cause I'll go there. I, I'm in the youth group. I go there <laughs> Sunday, right? And so I go in there, and they're like, "Whoa, are you Michael Tate?" Like so many like white people, <laughs> white kids. Yeah. I was just like, "Nah, dude." Nah. <laughs> I mean, cool. Yeah, pretty funny. That's hilarious, man. Yeah, I can see that, man. Um. But yeah, just, um, I mean, I would be listening to stuff in, in the Christian community. Hey, let me ask you this real quick. Do, do you have your hand over the, the uh, speaker at all? Because it's got some weird f- feedback when I talk. Check, check. All right, listen to that. That, that's a little bit better, yeah. In, in like the Christian community, listening to like Lecrae, who is a big name, KB, Cannon, some of the guys who, 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 who that they, they put out, um, you would hear these these rhyming schemes, fast chopping stuff that sounds like Tech Nine, and then uh, you're like, "Man, that's dope." And then I go li- listening to like Yellow Wolf or Tech Nine, and I'm like, "Wait, they're they're taking like the exact like complex rhyming schemes." So if I take you on top of the valley, uh, so if I take you on top of the Hollywood Valley, we're looking over the al- alleyway. I make your balloon pop. That's something. That's something that Yellow Wolf said. And then like it's this really long complex rhyming scheme that he does. And then a Christian rapper who's big, like, took the whole rhyming scheme. And the thing about the church realm is they don't know. They don't listen to Yellow Wolf. They don't listen to Tech Nine. They just listen to church music. You know what I'm saying? So this person is, like, making a, a living, a good living, biting off of rappers that the other kids don't listen to, the church kids can't listen to, you know? Yeah. I mean, that's definitely gross. I don't agree with it. But... Also, just as a precursor, I am not at all, like, Christian. I admire, I definitely admire, like, Jesus. I think, like, like my favorite Bible verse is, uh, like, what Jesus says, all these things I have done, you can do, and greater. Right. Like, I think, like, fair, yes, but I'm, I'm, I would not consider myself to be, like, a Christian. However, I can see, just playing the devil's advocate, ironically playing the devil's advocate, playing the, you know, but um, I, I could say that it, it's, like, not as bad i think as a secular rapper doing it because it's exactly what you said it's a christian rapper they are basically like okay you and and let's say as far as they know let's say they're earnest let's let's say let's assume they're earnest in their beliefs and so they believe that they are spreading the word of god to this group of their followers and they're supplying these like wicked awesome flows that are awesome and just lit to hear that their listeners wouldn't have access to otherwise. That's being a complete like non misanthropist. Like misanthropist. That's me yeah. being super. I believe the best in everyone. I'm, but sure, I'm sure that's I, what they believe when they're writing it yeah. for real. I think they are yeah. doing it that way. 
Yeah, but on the other hand, it is it's not something I would do. Like I, I would. Like, yeah. They're like, I'm taking the devil's work and I'm beating them with it. I'm like I'm taking it from them and using it for God. That's what they do. Like, no, you're stealing, bro. <laughs> like, no, the devil didn't write that. that. Like a dude named uh, Wayno, aka Yellow Wolf, wrote that. You didn't write that. <laughs> Give him yeah. credit for it at least, man. Yo, dude, when are we when are we gonna feature with Yellow Wolf, Truth Seeker? We gotta get that Truth Seeker, Witch Boy, Yellow Wolf track yeah, on. I know, right? I, yeah. I know, right? Um, I got so, I got some friends who did some work with him, and a, a buddy of mine was gonna get him on a, on a track for. Uh, he said he'd do it for a thousand, <laughs> so hmm. he was gonna get him on a track. Um, but yeah, uh, I got I got some I got some Yellow Wolf stories. I probably can't can't share. I probably may do it on another another uh, podcast with with a, someone who. Uh, has a baby with Yellow Wolf's sister, put it that way. And uh, I don't know if he's watching, but I'm supposed to give, get him on the podcast soon. I may let him tell some of those stories about Yellow Wolf. But um, as far as like um, the esoteric stuff, talking about all of the, the mysticism and stuff, um, if it's just a theory, it's one thing. If it's just fantasy, it's one thing. But like a lot of times, the, the uh, you know what I'm saying, the veil is thin, the realms cross over. And especially talking about Asheville, man, all of the festivals and the hippies and, and the mushrooms and everything that goes on there, like, it's it's also a hotbed for UFO activity. People who have seen UFOs and things like that. Have you ever had any alien encounters or UFO experiences? Uh, the closest thing to that that I would say is straight up alien, other than, like, dreams. I mean, dreams yeah. are, like, a whole other thing. Yeah, exactly. We can talk about that. But, I mean, who, who hasn't had that? Right? <laughs> no, right. But, um... Uh, but um, the most alien thing that's happened, so there, there's a couple of different things I could tell you. Uh, one um, involves a certain research chemical that people pretend is LSD, but isn't LSD. And it's called like DOX. It's like a research chemical. Uh, there's only been one time that I've taken it not knowing what it was. And this was during my more experimental phase. I've honestly like calmed down like a lot. Like <laughs> Eating years random old stuff now. at parties. Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Like, 27 now i like i'm like very like if i feel called to something i'll hang out with it other than that i'm like but before i was seeking this shit out like constantly right because i was trying to like unlock some shit i don't know i was trying i was looking for something but (laughs) um so i was like you know every time i would do this chemical specifically there is a being that i would like mentally connect with for like all of five seconds like every time Mm. so first time it's like you know i'm doing this at one point during my trip i'm in a room full of my friends i connect with this really tall praying mantis thingy Mm. and it's like kind of jerking and clicking and i'm like what the fuck with that right and then don't think about it for the rest of the trip so it happened the next time i did that stuff too because there's a i ended up getting like a strip of it and just kind of hanging out with it for a while and i'm like whatever it'll get fucked up and so let's see there was another time i did it same exact at a certain point in the trip same exact being same exact thing and i always forget about it until it happened and so after that i was thinking about it i was like wow what was that and so for a while i was thinking about things like okay it could be like a damn spirit animal i was thinking like is a praying mantis a spirit animal? What does this mean? It could be some kind of guide. Not like, you know, thinking about it. The, after the third time that it happened, I wasn't even looking for this, but I ended up, are you familiar with a YouTube speaker named Ted Montauk? Okay. Uh, well, anyway, he does like a bunch of like UFOs. I think so, yeah. Uh, Montauk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he does like UFOs, you know, matrix control thing. But anyway, he had this whole thing about the control matrix, like around controlling the planet, essentially. He talked about how there are certain interdimensional beings and certain aliens who are who have a hand in mankind's like development or control or whatever. And so he was showing these illustrations and you see the grave and you're like, yeah, I know them. You see the reptilians. You're like, yeah, I know them. Then you see this six foot tall praying mantis thing that looks exactly like what I've been seeing, you know? And I was like, what the fuck? You know, and, I, <laughs> uh, and then I did a little bit of research into it and they're like mantis or like ancient mantises. They're apparently like scientists. They're involved in like the human hybridization program or, some shit like that. If you believe in that kind of thing. Yeah. The post so, has some direct alien. Yeah. Thing had. Well, I mean, what, I mean, what was the chemical? Does it have any, any kind of plants in it at all? Or is it, I don't or think it just a chemical. So, I think it's a synthetic mess. It's a masculine analog. I think it's called DOX. Okay. Yeah. I don't know much about it, but yeah, there's a lot of people who, uh, whether I know, I, I hear a, a lot of times people talk about, um, taking salvia, the extract, and 
<laughs> You're laughing when I say that. <laughs> taking the t- taking the salvia extract and the, and they actually talk about uh, being approached by a woman um, who tells them not to smoke it. You know, in that realm, I've talked to several people who, in when they do salvia, they lose control of their body, obviously, but then they they see a woman that appears to them, and it's a sp- a spirit woman that's with salvia that used to connect with the ancients but if you watch the documentaries of people taking the salvia leaf and eating it or chewing on it it's a total different encounter total peaceful blissful experience more like maybe a stronger psilocybin i'm not sure but um i thought that was very interesting and different people were talking about working with different spirits behind the plants obviously the you know when we're talking about psilocybin mushrooms i've had some amazing encounters with what what I've ended up calling the golden teachers as far as a spirit, you know, by, by taking the golden teacher mushrooms, you know. So um, working with tobacco, uh, that's why whenever you see the um, the shamans when they're doing uh, clearings, they're always, even if they're, they're, they're smoking a cigar or a peace pipe and they're not even inhaling it, they're just taking it and they're blowing the smoke to, to rid the, the area of, of spirits and things like that. But they use it to work with the plant teachers. So it's pretty, pretty interesting when you can uh, consume a, a plant or a chemical, I guess for that matter, a synthetic being or whatever, whatever it is, we, we really don't know. But, uh, but you're in touch with something uh, far more intelligent than we are, something that's been here a lot uh, longer, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's a good thing. I, um, I've definitely had some great experiences on the more natural medication, you know, like the, like the mushrooms. I've had some very, like, pretty much mostly positive experiences. I've had some really, like, interesting things happen um, as far as, like, you know, sensations, like, whoa. Sorry about that. Um, understandings that have been passed on. I don't think I have actually, like, I think I've only, I mean, and once again, like, you know, sometimes like the veil goes back up afterwards. So maybe I forget a lot of what happened during it. But um, the most profound experience I've had on Silas Simon, it was kind of a conversation with like something or someone. And at one point I'm like tripping and then I see this vision of the, like the, like a, a city, let's say it's a city. And then it zooms out. It's an entire city. It zooms out. It's the planet. It zooms out. It's the universe zooms out again. It's like a, a position. It's like a, it's like a human shape sitting in like a Lotus, like cross leg position. And I was kind of like, okay, I get it. And I, and I, I perceived at that moment that everything was just like one being one consciousness experiencing itself in different ways and then i'm just like all right but why split yourself up like that like what's the point and then it was kind of like come closer and so i come closer and it was like a mirror and i saw myself in that mirror and it was just me and then for like like literally like a second i perceived what it felt like to be literally the only thing in existence and it was like crushingly like lonely and like stressful and like Mm. there was like nothing around me and it was like oh and then yeah i kind of like kind of spiraled into a bad trip after it because but it was weird it was like a bad trip from feeling like literally everything is perfect this is the spirit world this is all just the, everything yeah, is eternal isn't that weird? And, forever. and i was like uh it's and like my ego my ego just went nuts i had like brief ego death and then my ego like came back with a vengeance it was like no no wrong wrong <laughs> And like, man, honestly, I look back on it and I regret how I how I reacted to it because I feel like naked and running down the street. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 no. (laughs) that was another time. More like like trying to like not trip, like drinking a forty afterward. Like I'm gonna drink this forty and try to like lower my back down. You know that kind of shit. And I'm like, I don't think I would do that now. I think now I'd be like, yep, that's about right. Get some understanding from it. Yeah. Take me there. You know what I mean? Well, let me ask you this about the bad trip when you when you <laughs> felt that that void that almost uh, seems like when, when people talk about having the fear of death of uh, of that when they die, that nothing exists, that they're all alone and it's just black. Like you don't exist anymore. It almost sounds like that kind of overwhelming fear. You know what I'm saying? Took over you. Um, was there uh, like a, a point when it when you felt that that the time like that you were going to be stuck there? Like in that place that you were, that place of loneliness, like, damn, I'm, this is it. I'm going to be here forever. Was there a feeling like that? No, no, it was literally for like a second. And it was more just the realization that everything that I thought, it was what was more crushing for me and for my ego, it was nothing to do with that fear. It was more, it was all about like 
how okay everything that i think of like you my mom my friends the ground everything being separate and living in this certain kind of like material world and i you know i've been getting into eastern spirituality i've been getting into meditation before this but i still live purely in the i still lived in the physical realm and i was trying to live in the spiritual realm this shit like yanked me purely into the spiritual realm and it was like it's all the spiritual realm it's all just energy like your mom my you know your, my mom my friends my job it's all just like energy it's all just consciousness manifested in different areas and it's nothing like i ever thought it was and just that realization or that feeling just really like like i said my ego like did not take a while to that yeah no, it, get, it gets weird because you get into a place where time doesn't exist anymore either. Yeah. And people feel like yeah. they're going to be stuck there. And they're like, am I dead? And like people think they've, they've died and stuff because you're in a place where because time doesn't exist. And then yeah. you, you go to a place where you feel it. There's no time. So a minute seems like three hours, like literally. It's it's yeah. overwhelming. It, yeah. You know? Yeah. Time. There was, there was no time. It was just, yep, we're still here. We're, we're still, yep, we're still, you know what I mean? That's what I always talk about. Like a lot of people on uh, um, LSD or um, I guess strong doses of psilocybin talk about thinking that they that that they've died and they're in a state of purgatory, like waiting for God to judge them. Like I've I've heard stories of, of friends of mine who have been at parties and they all do acid and then they all f feel like they died and they turn on the TV and it's a preacher preaching about the end of the world and like we're dead, man. We're dead, and they're waiting for God to judge them. Because you're in this weird place where you're like, we just we just are, we just exist, and and it's kind of a cool thing because it's it, it's an overwhelming thing. But the message is to be in the moment. There is no time, and that's kind of what the the you know what the golden teachers and the spirit teachers they they try to they try to explain to you like don't wait, like whatever you want to do, whatever's in your heart, to do it now. Don't wait. For for time, just don't let time pass you by. Don't be on autopilot. Be in the now. Be in the moment. And there's just reiteration of that when you go into uh, a mushroom experience or a deep kundalini yoga experience. You kind of get that of like all is peace and all is now. The only moment we have is now. Be anxious for nothing, right? But seize the moment. And that and it's a strong, overwhelming urge in in that realm, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I like. I totally agree with that. Where are you headed? <laughs> to um, the bathroom? <laughs> oh, get some more coffee. Nah. Yeah. Okay, so somebody wants to know. I know uh, uh, Josh Austin's asking, um, where's Asheville? Asheville is in North Carolina. It's Western North Carolina. Um, it's like maybe three hours from Charlotte. Beautiful place, too. It really is. You've been there before, uh, True Speaker? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Dude, you got to come up again. We got to get you like a show or something. Definitely, or just, like, man. Out or, man. Definitely. I know you've been busy too, man. So, dude, I'd definitely come up there and do some oh, stuff with you. Do some stuff with Brian Divisions. What if like me, you, Brian Divisions? Because I introduced y'all during that, during that like thing. Because you guys would vibe so hard. You guys would vibe like so hard, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for it, man. Definitely up for it. Hey, just let everybody know who's listening. The phone lines are open. If you want to call in and join the conversation, or if you have a question for which boy or myself, make sure that uh, you go ahead and call in and let us know that you're in queue. The call is the number is sc uh, scrolling across the top of the screen as well as in the description. So if anybody wants to call, uh, people, man, uh, people hit me up all the time, want, wanting to talk, wanting to hang out and stuff. And so I try to make myself available to, during or after the podcast so make sure you guys call in this is this is your opportunity to do it so so moving forward man what's um as far as like like um videos and stuff for your music is that going to be a, a big thing i seen i seen the um oh, yeah. the uh shoot that you did the photo shoot that was really interesting with, with that that girl Who's yeah she? uh my friend gabriella she is so cool she's one of my favorite people that exists. She's just this like very powerful being. She's a model. Like she's awesome. She's she's seriously like the number one homie. That's what's up, what's up, man. And as far as um, videos and stuff, man, you got some any cool ideas floating around about that? I've got so many. I mean, literally. So this is like, I thought like I finally feel like I'm in a place where like I can just consistently. Yeah. <laughs> I can consistently uh, put in just like awesome. Uh, all right, 
I can consistently like just put out like you know content. That's that's basically that's what I want. Like this is what I do. Like this is what I want. I'm, it's like with you. Like this is what I want to do. Like professionally. Yeah. You know, I I want to. I'm a rapper. You know, I'm also a creator. I'm also like I'm an artist. So that's I'm gonna continually put out really cool shit. I just dropped uh, two videos in December in preparation for the release of 111 um i don't know if you had a chance to check out either of them yet but one of them is called the invocation okay yeah yeah you put it it's on Facebook, first yeah. yeah it's the first um it's the first uh thing first song on 111 so i put that out i put out this uh amv it was like a from like an anime called junie tyson but it was like an amv for my song purge gang with my yeah. friend bobby white yeah and that. so yeah, so I've put those out. They've been chilling. Um, yeah, I've just got plans. 2018. I've got. I basically I want to make just continually put out videos. Uh, the in particular, I'm gonna start. I've got another video. It's gonna drop soon. It's in the post production right now for my single "Not Human." That's up on Spotify right now. So if you want to check out uh, Spotify or iTunes or Tidal or whatever like that, um, look at Witch Boy with two V's. I've got a single on there called Not Human. And there's going to be a video for that dropping soon. And then I'm about to start um, shooting a video for uh, a few more, a few more of my tracks. So just, you know, stay tuned for all that. That's what's up, man. Yeah, it's kind of at the point now where, like, you kind of have to do a video with your song. You can't just put out a cool song with a picture. Uh, you got to do some type of visual for it to get some kind of um, viral traction online and, and kind of give some... Yeah some life to it so that's the thing that's about like kind of like you know what i'm saying moving forward with collabing and doing features with people like the thing is like we got to be able to shoot videos too you know yeah and the cool thing is i mean like i'm all, like let's say you and i were to do a collab i'm all for like you know meeting up like going out because i have family in alabama i'm all for like randomly just showing up and be like what up fool but at the same time <laughs> i had i have video equipment like we yeah. have video equipment here at my house yeah uh we got Nice, like I think it's a Canon. We've got lighting fixtures. We so basically, if, even if it came down to it, and we had to do some like I don't know. You do your scene, I do my scene, oh, yeah. and then we there's, like. There's a bunch yeah. of that. We do that a lot. Yeah. 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 That's what's up. Uh, we do have a caller here. I'll go ahead and take this call. We got a call from um, Southern California. Who are we speaking with? Hey, what's going on? It's Leo. What's going on, Derek? Leo, what's going on, which boy? What up? What's going on, guys? Hey, so I got a question. I got a question for you, Witch Boy. Hey, so uh, do you ever feel like something is attacking you or holding you back from really reaching your potential, whether it be people, psychic vampires, you know, negative energies, whatever you may uh, conceptualize it as? And if so, what are some techniques you have to combat that? Uh, some people use Palo Santo. Some people pray. Some people meditate. I guess you personally, what is your, what is your, your sacred place you go to, to combat that and find peace? And then my other question is like, what's your angle, man? Like what, what message are you trying to push so I can get to better know you? All right, brother, I'll take these yeah. questions off the, off the air and uh, much love to you guys. Okay. All right, Leo. Shalom, brother. All right. Love. Later, brother. Much love. Wow, those such good questions. I like those questions a lot. Those those were those were two good questions. All right. Um, yeah, I'll go ahead and dive into it. Uh, psychic attacks. Uh, yes, I've experienced them, but it, it's kind of a different um, angle, right? I never really feel like I'm being attacked and held back. Anytime I've been, anytime I quote unquote am like psychically attacked or have been psychically attacked. It's generally like during sleep paralysis. I've been getting like sleep paralysis since I was like five years old. Yeah. And there'll be times where I'm like, you know, in some kind of like half asleep days um, or something and I'll get, I'll be sleep paralysis. And sometimes it can be good. Like sometimes I'll use it and I'll like project myself into a lucid dream or sometimes I'll just meditate and it'll just be like really regenerating and awesome. But sometimes I'll be, I'll feel fear or I'll feel like a malevolent presence. Yeah. And there was a point where I would fight these entities. I got to where I could, okay, I can't move my body, but I can like imagine myself sitting up and like shooting lightning at them. And then they like go away or whatever. But I kind of reached this point where I realized in a lot of ways, I'm just fighting myself. And this goes into the other part of that question where you say, if you ever feel like you're being held back or blocked, the reality is 
I recognize that if I am being attacked, if I am being held back from reaching my potential, it's because of something that I'm consenting to. It's because on some level, I am a vibrational match to that which is whatever. So, you know, I, I got to think about, you know, times I've been had really bad sleep paralysis. What have I been doing? You know, it happened a lot more when I was, you know, kind of, I don't know, I'd fall asleep. Like I'd be like really like drunk or something and just happen to like fall asleep super unconscious. Or it might happen just, just a time in my life where I'm like kind of more vulnerable in that way rarely happens if i'm like you know meditating it rarely happens if i'm like keeping a generally high vibration and if it does in those states i generally don't feel fear um i've been in situations where i felt weird presences but because i was in like a good vibration i just was just chilling and i was just like what's up <laughs> or I was like, I'm in love. I'm like, you are a part of this just like me. Here, let me remind you. Yeah. And then I like, up. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I found that to be like a lot more effective. So then going to what you were saying about being held back, um, I am cu I'm currently part of my work right now. And this goes into the other, other question you asked me with what's my angle. Um, my work right now, I'm kind of going back to basics in a lot of way. Like my name is Witch Boy. I'm all about magic. I'm all about like, reaching my true potential but i recognize that part of reaching my true potential is you know working from like the ground level up basically so what i'm trying to do right now is like basically just make sure everything about me right now is like consistent and like with integrity so if i talk about feeling like held back I sometimes feel held back, but I understand that it's my own blockages that are up. I, right now, could be in a totally different place than I'm in, um, on both a really good side and both a really bad side, but if I'm looking at, okay, why aren't I in Germany right now? Why aren't, why don't I have, like, you know, all of the Bitcoins and all the money in my account? Why aren't I, like, I don't know, on this whole other level right now? I think that we have the ability to be like wherever we want to be, but I think that I'm aware, I can even feel it right now, there's like this wall of disbelief, there's like this wall of like, not not quite yet, that's just there, and it's like a seal, and so part of my work right now is just kind of understanding that, kind of integrating it, kind of transfiguring that back into like the pure energy of like, the universe basically it's basically like i'm learning how to like quantum physics basically and like that's part of my work and that's part of my like life path and part of the reason i'm here is that i i'm going from this level and this is the path i'm blazing and then i'm illustrating that via my music so my message being yes i have your message if you listen to it i'll talk about things like law of attraction i'll talk about things like magic but it's from a very what i feel like it's it's like my point of view because i literally kind of came from nothing in a lot of ways like my i love my family um i love my parents but i mean really if you like i literally built myself up from you know okay being really poor when i was a kid not knowing where i was going to get food from um being super socially awkward at one point hating myself um feeling like i didn't have any friends feeling like the world was like a horrible unfair place to a place where i'm like you know i got into martial arts like i'm a martial arts instructor i'm a rapper i have albums on you can get on spotify and itunes um i've traveled to play shows and this is only like the beginning my goal is to literally just get to that place of just unlimited abundance which it's already here like we're already here but it's to like manifest that directly in my life from where i was and that's like that's like my path and then i'm illustrating it and i'm um telling it and regaling all of you with it to inspire to entertain to whatever in that yeah, is yeah, but yeah, yeah. that's about as far as like that's my angle as you, you might say creativity man um yeah i think it's cool and it speaks about spirituality is that kind of like a level up that you have and and people who are who have a who practice a spiritual life have uh as far as when you're in a place of you don't know what to do next or people are like you know what I'm saying? What is my life's purpose? Why am I here? What direction am I headed? Like a lot of people are hopeless. They don't know their calling. They don't know why they're here. They, I guess they kind of feel like you felt some years ago and they find themselves there. But through spiritual practice and through doing your own shadow work and dealing with your own stuff, you can now see the barriers that hold you back. And you're not denying there's things that you have to learn and things you have to get back. You see them plainly and you know that it's only a testing or a different level that you have to approach it as. And, and it's here for a reason. You're able to kind of see the blocks that are there or see the barriers 
versus those who are just kind of in the dark. They they can't see up, up from down, but having a spiritual practice lets you be able to see, um, I guess, the road ahead and where you're going. I, and I say that because I'm the same way. Like if I if I have something stagnant in my life or I need, I need to move to another level and I can see the level there, many times I can see the obstacle. I can see is that I'm focusing on this too much. Uh, my my ego is getting in the way. I'm becoming prideful. Uh, I'm not doing this. And once once I do this, then I'll be able to freely move to the next level and 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 um and and this destiny or this calling that 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 we're we're walking in. And that's 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 really cool. Yeah. So. <laughs> As far as uh, so, um, so uh, um, Joshua Hoge says, "Have you ever connected to the spirit realm through meditation?" And I know you have, but what is a? Uh, uh oh, are you still there? You still? There? I'm still here. I got it. I'm, let me uh, let me uh, plug my phone up real quick. You're cool. You're cool. Got it. Got it. So, have right. you ever connected to the spirit realm through? Meditation, and I know you have, but what what, what are some of the the uh, techniques in which you in, in which you do that maybe some of the early stuff for people who are just starting out wanting to, yeah. to kind of you know what i'm saying give it what a try. Opened, what opened the door for me really nicely was um so it, it was a couple it was a couple of a two-prong thing um one is my uh my my sifu right like the person who taught me martial arts like i'm a instructor i'm a black belt level in fma which is filipino martial arts so that's eskrima and kuntao from the philippines my uh, sifu adi Purusadas was a monk a brahmachari for eight years and so he um knows a lot about mantra meditation and stuff and so you know this was at the beginning of me like seeking probably when i was like 21 22 so a few years ago i um asked him about meditation because you know he'd been a monk so like why not ask this like you know monk about you know who like also has taught me like a lot about like martial arts and stuff you know a little bit about spirituality so he introduced me to like mantra meditation and i started studying like a little bit of like vedic scriptures and like you know Hare krishna maha mantra ganesha like mantra Lakshmi mantra you know just basically like like sanskrit mantras that are meant to like raise your vibration focus your mind because i am exceptionally add sometimes and yeah. i mean i a better than I have ever been before but this is like this is I was just starting martial arts really maybe I was a year or two in and yeah this is just like like no spiritual practice or discipline I was just I would try to sit down and meditate and it would just be like nope not happening it feels like an hour and I look at the clock and it's been like two minutes and I'm like what <laughs> So the, the mantras were really helpful for me because I got these beads and then you're able to do like around like 108 repetitions of um you know, of like your mantra and then you do around and that's about good. And if you even just start with a daily practice of I'm going to do 108, I'm going to do 108 repetitions like of, you know, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, you know, do that like 108 times. A, like a day that makes a difference and i think that um that was a good starting point um and then i got to where i would just do it like a lot and you know you can definitely like you connect to some pretty cool stuff uh the thing i would watch out for though with anything um with anything that you do is just and this is just me telling you in advance uh watch out for any dogmas like really just don't let yourself get bogged down by yeah. too much dogma. um and Going beyond that, the other thing that I found really helpful was, uh, like, the uh, so I had this teacher, uh, Phoenix Roldan. I don't know how many of you listening have ever heard of Phoenix Roldan. He did some work with uh, spirit science for a while, though. And he, he pa he's passed on, but he was a very, like, even a teacher. He taught qi Qigong. He taught breath work, all that. But I did a couple of workshops with him at some festivals when he came through Asheville. And one in particular he introduced me to was the Merkaba light body meditation, which is like a kind of kundalini breathing variant. Yeah. And you can actually find the, um, there's a meditation that, by him that I still use to this day. If you go on YouTube and look up Phoenix Merkaba and you spell Phoenix P-H-E-O-N-Y-X. And 
it's Camp Rockmont. It's from this festival called Three Day of the Light, like three or four years ago that, you know, everyone's sitting outside, but it's a, it's a real time um, recording of this meditation. I'm not in the recording because I did the, I did the one the day after that, which was indoors, but I still use that one. And it's about like a 45 minute process, uh, maybe an hour if you listen to his explanation beforehand. But doing that is powerful. That's probably the most powerful meditation I've done because I can honestly say probably physically speaking at the end of it if you do it and you're like you know into it and you can clear your head your whole body will like buzz like you will feel energy you will like unlock some shit and so you know I've done that and I feel like that's been like very transformative but once again I just you know I basically I um I I am um, greatly caution against being enslaved to any kind of dogmas because and the reason I say that is because that's what happened to me like you know I went through my like ego phase you know with the spirituality where I like you know I got into it like oh yeah I'm gonna take some LSD and mushrooms and I'm gonna meditate and oh my god I'm, I'm so woke and you know then it became this matter of I'm trying to become something better I'm trying to upgrade myself I'm doing this like Merkaba meditation and it's gonna like help me ascend or I'm chanting these these like rounds and it's gonna make me like better in some way or other and it's just I just think that that's a pitfall that it took me years to like kind of finally put aside and move past. So that's why I just say it all as a disclaimer is just try to remain open and humble and just try to use it as more of an accelerant to your own growth yeah. as opposed to being like this, okay, I'm doing it. And now I'm better than like other people or now I'm, I don't know, just ranting now, but yeah, no, yeah. I mean the dogma thing is, is really good because, um, in each one of these, um, schools of thought they feel like they own the terms or they own the uh euphoric experience or encounter right that that uh feeling of electricity that that you felt through deep meditation and these chantings and stuff people feel that at church every sunday morning when they close their eyes and they're, and they're essentially doing a mantra their eyes are closed their hands are raised yeah and they're just repeating i, I remember some of the songs were like I love you, I love you, I love you. And they would sing that like 40 times. That's a mantra. And their eyes are closed. They're connecting with God above. And they're singing a mantra. And they're caught up in this blissful encounter. They're tingling. They're shaking. It's the same thing. So these the church feels like they own, own, own the mantras. And they own that euphoric encounter with, with, this, with spirit. And then, you know, those of the, um, you know what I'm saying, the, the, the Buddhists or the Hindu traditions or or whoever, they all feel like they own it and it's theirs when it's not. This is a universal energy and you can connect through it with it through many different uh, paths and, and it's all there. And so the terminology and stuff like that, people trip over and fall over. And um, I think, I, I think I do, I use a lot of it um, because it is dogma and I love to kind of bust up your realm of thinking to make you know, people think that like, Christianity is the only religion that speaks in tongues, and that's totally not the case. It's called, you know what I'm saying? Um, Glossolalia. Yeah, and like yeah. E everybody does it. Like all, 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 the, all the religious ex ecstatic experiences would, would do it. That You know, all the women falling on the ground, speaking in tongues and rolling. Like that's been practiced for, for, oh, yeah. for, uh, for years, man, by all types well, of religions, man. Absolutely, like Greek, ancient Greek yeah. religion, all that shit. You know, so Tammuz, it's funny. worship. There's like a bunch of weird, uh, not kind of weird spirit stuff in my family. Like my uh, my great grandpa like practiced some voodoo. He like was yeah. pretty into that. He didn't like he didn't personally like he was more of a user. He did not. He wasn't like any kind of like shaman or anything. But he um, he would do really irresponsible shit and like be about to like go to jail and then he would uh, <laughs> go up to Saluda. So my family's from like kind of the western north carolina like marion hickory kind of like the kind of more outlying areas not Asheville. that's where most of my family's from um but yeah my grand my great grandpa he would just do some like weird shit like he'd like drive without a license or drive drunk and he'd be going to jail and then he'd go up to saluda and he would see this like woman who was like some kind of like witch and she would just give him like you know roots and charms and stuff to work and he would do it he would like follow her instructions it'd be some stuff like okay chew on this root and then spit outside the courtroom before you go in and then he'd do it and they would just like let him go it would be like okay you can it's like wait what and then you know my um and then on the other side my on my mom's side my great grandma my great great grandma she would uh she actually was a minister and she used to like cast out demons 
demons and shit. Like, apparently, like, you know, they had, like, the churches, she would literally, like, cast demons out of people and stuff. And so, you know, and my family is very, like, predominantly Christian. Like, they're really nice. You normally hear people who are maybe a little bit weird, like, like I, I might be considered to be not having the best relationship with their family due to differences. But that's not really the case with me. Like, my family is, like, very understanding and that's open. Great. But they're all, um, yeah, they're all very, very religious. So I would just say, as a whole, spirituality has always been a part of my life. So yeah. when I was a kid, I wanted to understand God. Like, I used to want to be a preacher. Like, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a preacher. I wanted to be a prophet, more specifically, because I would read, like, the Old Testament. And I'd want the powers. <laughs> yeah, I'd want to be, like, Elijah, and I'd yeah. want to be, you know, any of those people. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. Man, look, thanks for coming on, hanging out with me, bro. It's been good to connect with you. Go ahead and drop your links, man, and uh, let everybody know where they can check out your music and what to type in on Facebook, all that good stuff. Okay, yeah, no problem. Um, as of right now, uh, you can find my uh, work as Witch Boy, V V I T C H B O Y. Um, find me on Facebook. Go ahead and drop a like. Uh, go ahead and follow me on Spotify if you want. Uh, so far, there's one single. I've got an upcoming album dropping, my first solo album dropping on January 11th. Uh, it's called 111. It'll be available on all the stores. So, yeah, just go ahead and uh, subscribe or like that page, and you'll be updated. Um, in the meantime, you can also check out my work with The Last Word Vendors. Uh, they got plenty of stuff on Spotify, iTunes, etc. cetera. Uh, Truth Seeker, thank you so much for having me on here. Hey, right, thanks for hanging out with me, brother. It was finally good to connect with you, man. We'll have to do it again. Yeah, totally. All right, brother. Shalom, shalom. Peace. Peace. Which boy? Jeshua Morningstar. Jochanel Foster. I, I hope I said his name right. He's on Facebook, everybody. Go on there and add him. And, uh, really cool guy. Um, yeah, just getting through some of these comments here. People hanging out in the chat. Um, let's see. Carolyn says, I've revved up my meditation practice over the long holiday break. I'm Bible-oriented. What a book. It's magical. But want to read other scriptures. Oh, yeah. Um, I tell you what, um, Carolyn, w once you have that, that foundation of, of the scriptures, of the, the core understanding about what the Bible teaches, spirituality, and those things, it's cool to actually venture off into some of the Vedic text or some of the... Um, lost books of the Bible because <clears throat> it helps you understand the scriptures more. Like when you read these other realms of thinking, you get a sense of the bigger picture and then it, it, it kind of destroys the dogma. You're like, Hey, how, while well, I'm in church and they tell me that this is the only way and this is it. When these people are saying the same exact thing, like they're saying the same thing that we're saying, but you told me they're bad people. Wait a minute. They're saying the same thing. And so, therefore, it creates a schism, and you have to study, and you have to get into it, and you have to look within yourself and wrestle, like, okay, who's right, who's wrong? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Just because I'm wrong doesn't mean you're right. So and there's no such thing as just one person being right and, 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 like, one person being wrong. And I think that a lot of truth is relative. It's, it's truth to you. It works for you. Um, I, to I totally believe that because um, a lot of people aren't, privy to some of the knowledge that many of you guys have uh, researched and studied and experienced there's stuff that 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 we believe that um pe people will never experience and we don't hold them at fault for that but we can't get offended that they don't vouch for our work or they don't understand these universal principles we're talking about or if we're talking about aliens the aliens is a funny one with the the church and stuff, you know what I'm saying? So that they don't understand that. They haven't experienced that. So, and that's good. Like for them just to take your word for it, never take my word for anything. Most people who are listening, you guys are listening because you've had an experience. You've had an encounter with something, maybe with religion. You've had an encounter with religion. You've had an encounter with God. You've had an encounter with demons, angels, whatever mushrooms whatever the case is like everybody's here because they've they've touched the divine and they're trying to make sense of it they want to kind of go f forward with it they want to take it to the next level they want some they want some rationale they want to make sense of this stuff that they've been seeing since they were a kid i was laying in bed last night just thinking about like why me 
like what did I do um, oh, as a kid to like welcome all of these crazy experiences that I had as a kid? And then it kind of begs to to question not what did I do, but what did my parents do? What were my parents involved in that uh, different things were, were going on in the in the night in our house and having these freaking uh, crazy in- encounters as a kid? And then it c- gets into that my my mom and my grandmother they were uh, I don't I don't think they were deep into it, but they would burn candles for relationships. Like if there was like if they had a a fallout with one of their best friends, like they would go and and to the witchcraft store or the, the voodoo shop or from a friend because everybody did it and they would get candles. Like, hey girl, you got a blue candle? I need to get a blue candle from you. Like it was, I'm I'm from New Orleans and that, like in New Orleans that was like a normal practice and it was going on like these different candles burning for energies to be released and stuff and all kinds of, of spiritual encounter and spiritual experiences. And it kind of, it's weird for me. So like the first thing I do when I still have encounters to this day in the night, three o'clock in the morning, whatever I wake up, I have encounters with beings in the room or spirits or whatever. Um, I go back to when I was a kid. The first thing I do is I, I go check my daughter. I go to my daughter's room, make sure she's okay. And that comes back from me as a kid having encounters in my room, scared to death, couldn't go to sleep. And some of it from like when I got older watching scary movies and stuff like that. But um, as a little kid, before I knew any of this stuff, man, my parents being involved with, with different spirits and, and, and dealing with psychics and energy work and stuff like that. And, uh, and drug use and parties and letting crazy people over at our house. I was talking to my daughter and wife the other day. I remember <clears throat> when I was a little bitty kid, man, I, I couldn't have been older than than five. I remember sitting at um, our, our um, coffee table, or not, it was a kitchen table, really big uh, kitchen table that my grandfather built, sitting there at a party talking to um, one of my parents' friends. It was an old man named Mr. Willie, and he lived in a, a, a houseboat. And if you guys are from the South, you know what a houseboat is. It's a it's a floating house. It's, and it could be a little shed, like a little shed that floats on the water. And, uh, and you don't have to pay taxes and none of that stuff. You just live in it, right? And as long as you're not on the land. So there was a lot, there was a lot of people who, lived in, who, who live in those down here in the South. And actually, my mom lived in one for a while. But there was an old man at this party named Mr. Willie. I was sitting at the table talking to him. And I'm like five years old. Mid-conversation, I'm sitting there eating candy out of the uh, candy dish. And this old man, he's just drunk out of his mind. I'm in mid-conversation. He just falls back from the table. He falls off the table, and he's, like, knocked out. I remember my dad and my uncle's picking him up by his arms and his legs, walking him out. And this, like, drinking and partying, all all of this stuff going on in our house, you know what I'm saying, when I was a little kid, and just the different spirits that uh, were allowed to come in. And that could be dangerous for many reasons, letting people that you don't know around your kids or watch your kids or whatever the case is, man. And I've, growing up, like, I've totally experienced that stuff. So I always, you know, I have encounters and stuff like that. I always check my daughter, man, make sure that she's okay and nothing's in there messing with her. Not to say that that would ever happen, but that's, I'm triggered, I go back to that when I was a kid, right? Carolyn says, it seems pretty universal because spirit is always the same. It sounds weird, maybe, but I have, but I actually have taken responsibility for pulling some negative patterns into my life by crying myself to sleep a lot as a kid and feeling sorry for myself all the time. Mm. Yeah, I could see I could see that be to be be true. Um Chris says, uh, we all come from the same universal love. That's true. Carolyn says, I see God as a as lo- as a loving but some of impersonal spirit. No respect of persons. Even if one is a kid, my household was hard, drinking and violence, but also love. We were very emotional. Yeah, because in the end, I mean, we're, we're just a mixture of it all. Like, to to just say that it's only good stuff or to be so protective. Like, many people, and I'm probably one of them, I think our generation is one of them, really. Um, 
are because we've had these crazy upbringings, whether it's being left at home by yourself to, to fend for yourself as a little kid, um, having bad things happen to to you. Many of us in this generation are overly protective of our kids where we don't let them do anything. We're just talking like my daughter's 13 at like in this. I would just roam the neighborhood, roam the streets, roam the city as a little kid. We'd just go walking into the city and stuff and we'd get lost. And for fun, I used to go to the hood. We'd go to the projects and just get lost in the middle of the projects until and people trying to jump us and beat us up and all kind of stuff. And that's what we did as fun. Like, I don't know. I just, it's, it's, it's a different time that we live in. I don't know if, I don't even know if times are worse. Like, I don't, I don't know if anything's changed from when I was a kid in the uh, late eighties, early nineties, mid nineties to, to now. We feel like it has, we feel like, like everything's a lot darker, that people are wickeder, that people will kidnap your kid or take your kid or whatever the case is. But, um, because this is a, this is not just me. It's so many people who talk about like when they they were kids, they would just go in the woods all day and just roam through the woods with a machete, making trails and making tree houses and forts, just way way in the woods, miles away at times, you know. Um, I, I, for some reason, I uh, I couldn't see letting my daughter go out and do that, and it was very um, um, very hard even to trust other people around my daughter. It's just weird because you, you come up with this crazy um, life, but then I don't know if the kids, the kids suffer because of it. Now they, now they can't uh, experience life um, and do those things. Like, you know, it's just, it's weird to think about guys. And I know I'm not alone in this, but I've had this conversation with a lot of people who have kids and I think it's like it's an over it's an overprotection, but you have to learn and trust me we we've come a long way at this point but but still though I mean there's no way she would just let my daughter just run <laughs> run through the woods, you know what I'm saying like I don't know it's crazy, man, so um part of it's about being being protective and I don't know I mean what do you guys think is is uh are times worse now than it was in the 90s i don't because I, I don't think it is i think that technology has advanced so much um that now we're just more conscious of it i don't know if the murder rates h- how much the murder rates have gone up i know you, there's stats and stuff but i think we're just more conscious of it i think we're, we're conscious of of all the bad stuff now because it's filmed everybody has a smartphone um they do movies, television shows, news coverage on all this stuff, and we're just consumed with all this negativity and fear on the television and on the news and stuff. So I think we're just more conscious of it, and we're just more aware. Um, I, don't know if it, I don't know if it's the numbers have changed that much to where it's like, oh, it's a big threat. Don't let your kids go in the woods now. You know, I don't know, man. I think it's just something that we're just overly protective about because for me, like, my family, that's my heart. Like, that's all I have. It really is. And I would never want anything, anyone to, to do anything to them or to hurt them or harm them. Um, so I protect, I protect it as if it's my heart. Like, I would never let somebody take my heart and run through the woods with it. Like, I wouldn't, you know. And that's how, that's how I view it. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but uh, it's a, it, it, is a, it is a learning curve. But I know that was a tangent, but it's uh, something... To, to look into because they say some of the coolest people, right? Look at me. Some of the coolest people are the people who have had these bad upbringings and had these crazy upbringings. It gives people personality and uh, versus the kids who have never seen anything. They feel entitled. They've had everything, uh, you know what I'm saying, given to them on a silver uh, spoon. Like sometimes those people can be brats or or just to have this weird sense of entitlement and for those who have been through um a lot of resistance and stuff i mean the scriptures talk about um like going through trials and having these these different things that we go through it builds character in us and how many of us know those people who who are just they are characters like they're just crazy it's because they had a crazy past like i remember man 
you know, my, my cousins and family members, you're getting beat by your parents, like literally fight, like your parent. you had to fight your parents. I remember, man, seeing my friends and cousins being choked out by their parents, holding them up against the wall, choking them out and stuff, and just crazy stuff, man, that we had to put up with as kids, man. Uh, so Chris Garner says, <clears throat> in schools, I think times are worse. With the added bullying from social media, schools have become much harder to navigate. My daughter has a hard time because she is a bit more innocent than the majority of the kids. Yeah, man. Um, my daughter, we sent her to um, private school the first several years of, of her schooling and then put her into uh, public. And it was night and day. She 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 was depressed. Like, it was just different. The kids are different. The parents, ah, oh, man. So she, and she was depressed. She was going through that and being bullied and all that kind of stuff too. And we we pulled her out and put her back in the, in the schools that she was in. And it costs more money and it's, you know, it's, you have to do without, but I think it's worth it, you know? Um, and maybe that's also the form of, of sheltering your kids, but you don't want to throw your kids to the wolves either. I mean, come on, right? A lot of, a lot of crazy stuff. And like I said, technology has, has come so far to where we were, to where we are today, I don't know if I would have made it. Like, I was so crazy. If I had social media and, like, if I had social media when I was a kid, and you, I would, I'd be in trouble. I'd be in trouble for so many reasons. Because I, I know the person I used to be. And if technology had come as far as it did, I, would be, I wouldn't be here, y'all. Where um, you guys are posting on Facebook, letting letting you know you're letting people know your every move. Hey, fixing to head to the store, headed to Disneyland with the kids, and you're sending pictures. Like I would be in your house when you when you told when you said that you were leaving and you're going on va family vacation. I'd go to your house. I'd be in your house taking stuff. I mean, I, you know what I'm saying. And you're giving, you're letting people know, and just I guess the you know the need to be seen or whatever. Like I, there's some. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here. Let's just put it that way. Um, Joshua says, Derek, do you have any advice on meditation? I really want to start, but have had, but have had experiences with demonic in the past. I just want to be wise as I begin my journey. <clears throat> this is from Joshua. Yeah, man. Um, so that's exactly what you said though. You said you have had experiences with the demonic in the past. I guess I would ask, what were you doing in the past? Were you doing activities and things that catered to demonic influence? Because when I first got into spirituality and the occult and meditation and stuff, it was during those 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 um, days of robbing people, stealing. Like you know how I got my witchcraft books, my books on meditation. I stole them. I stole them from people and I stole them from the store. And then I would try to meditate and I would try to contact beings. Oh, I contacted beings, okay. Whatever you're doing, whatever what whatever level that you're vibrating at, those are the beings that you're gonna connect with first. And if you're living a negative lifestyle, ripping people off, lying, manipulating people, you gotta deal with those those entities in some shape, form, or fashion, whether you transcend them. Whether, like, you you have to deal with them or they will deal with you. So early on, I dealt with them. I had demonic possession. I had, I would, you know, I tried to, to go into those realms unknowingly with doing all the bad stuff that I was doing. I got possessed, man. I, I, went, I went insane. I was going crazy dealing with those demons in those realms. And it had me for years not wanting to, t I didn't want to be around anything that would um, be similar to what I came out of. Like when I, when I came out of that stuff and I got in the church and got with Jesus, right? Like I couldn't even be around um, incense, people burning incense because it reminded me of where I came from of, and where, where I came from was I ended up getting possessed and possessed by demons. So with everything we're talking about, with meditation, with prayer, astral travel, whatever the case is, mushrooms, whatever, it's all about the the intention and doing your own spiritual work. Doing your own spiritual work. Um, but you have, like, whatever whatever 
level that you're you're vibrating at, which means whatever you're doing, you're going to be there. And so I, I'm I'm working on a, a bunch of writings right now. I'm working on a course and some books and stuff like that that I want to get out there. And I'm addressing a lot of these spirits and a lot of these things on the other side and how they interact. And with all of the interest in it, and even in my music where I talk about it very nonchalantly, like it's an everyday experience. I don't travel the ethers every day. Most days I'm hanging out with family doing normal stuff. That's not an everyday thing. So the way we, we paint it in the music and we talk about it and we do it in videos, it's very much a part of my life, my friend's life, my family. But there is also like the warning to be careful, to, to be careful. And, uh, you know, and, and it's all about transcending spiritually. But if you're not doing that stuff, if you're not um, manipulating people and doing all this bad stuff, I wouldn't fear anything. I'd say that Jesus says perfect love casts out all fear. I'd say let that be your truth when you go into meditation. And clothe yourself with that, with the mind of Christ. Enter in your meditation with worship music. Play some Bethel music, some some beautiful worship music. Play that. Go into the spirit realm with uh, with thanksgiving, with praise, with adoration to your Father. And then there's no there's no way nothing can touch you. Ask God, set the intention, be clothed with the white light of the Holy Spirit. Uh -oh. These dogs out here are barking. So, um, with that being said, man, th there's uh, nothing to fear. So. What was Jesus doing to have interaction? It's not an always a result of your behavior. All right. All right. So what was Jesus doing to have interaction? Well, what Jesus was doing is, is essentially what we should be doing. Coming away 